Danny from Pico here. What we want to do here at Pico is to make your life easier. Make it easy for you to make your dreams come true, make your virtual reality application come to life faster than ever before. So I'm happy to announce that we have in our SDK 3.1 and 3.2, we have Pico building blocks. Things like adding your camera, adding hand tracking, and doing see-through, all the little tiny things to get the steps you need to get started, you can do with just a simple click. Let's get started. This is getting started with Pico Building Blocks. First, we'll go over Pico Portal and the different settings, grab all the SDKs we need. Then for the building blocks, I will introduce you with the location where you can find it. And then I'll go through the controller blocks, see-through blocks, and then the hand tracking blocks. There is audio and there is motion tracker as well, but we can do this at, at another time. Requirements for this project is Pico Device OS 5.13, Unity Integration 3.2, Unity 22.3, I'm using 0.49, and XI Toolkit 3, I'm using 3.1 for this project. One of the new features we have is Pico Portal. This is just a one-stop shop where you can find the Pico integration SDK. We'd have project validation, all the different things we can help you get started. So project validation, Pico building blocks, and these links to the documentation where we have all this information about our Pico Developer Center, Profile and Toolkit, and the emulators. Then in the samples, we made a lot of samples. I've, I've gone over the interaction sample pack, uh, the Tomb World, the Micro War, information that you might need to help you out here. And it tells you a different version, and it tells you right away which Unity version is supported by the specific SDK. Okay, and back in a brand new Unity project, we're going to need XR Toolkit 3.0 or higher. I specifically want 3.1, so you can hear the version option where you can have 3.1.2. Add that in there. Next, we're going to add our Pico SDK. Usually, I just like adding it into packages, drag and drop. And once you load this up, it's going to open up Pico Portal. And go ahead and click All to apply to all. And it's going to tell you you're going to need to activate the XR plugin for Pico. And let's go grab the scene on the tab here. And this uh, room is from our interaction sample. You're free to use it however you guys want. And let's go ahead and to project settings and go to plugin management and activate the Pico. And all these tiny details here, we can actually do this by going to project validation and pressing fix all. And it does a lot of little tiny things for you. Let's go and let that load. And you can look at the project validation to see all the different changes and double check yourself. Quality, I like using balance, a little bit easier for VR and you can tweak it from higher or lower depending on your project there. Let's switch to URP. And when you have a new URP, always check if you have screen space, ambient occlusion, make sure you remove that for VR projects. It's also removed post-processing since we'll be using see-through and we also need to disable HDR since we're using see-through and uh, enable anti-aliasing. Okay. And let's go remove this and let's start. Let's find out the different locations of where overlay is. I mean, you can use overlay and then you can find the XR building blocks here. And let's turn that off, go over the menu, let's turn that back off. You can also find it in the create plus button here, Pico building blocks. And you can also right click and press create to find the different building block locations. Okay, we can finally get started. Let's start by creating a new scene. We'll start with the first block controller. So let's just call this controller. Now by clicking the first one, it's going to check if you have the starter assets. And if you don't have that, it will just automatically down it for you. How cool is that? So after that, it's going to check if there's an XR origin object in the scene. If not, we're going to add an XR object origin rig for you. So let's go ahead and try it again. Press it. Now that we have the asset, it's going to add the XR origin for you. It's going to add the PRXR manager to the XR origin. And then it's going to have the left and right controller and then add in the Pico visualizer as well. Uh, movement is the, the uh, turned off by default. You can go ahead and turn that on if you want to move around with a joystick. There are the PRXR controllers. Great. And then what it can also do on the second one for controller canvas, uh, first we need a import TextMax Pro. And you, when you click the controller canvas, it will make sure the XR origin is there, but also it will create a world space canvas for you with a track device graphic raycaster that in already interacts with the scripts on the controllers for you. So let's test this out. I didn't do anything extra on the controllers. I'm just going to add the text mesh 
uh, add a button, maybe like a drop down or something like that. Just let's turn and scale it up to two. Let's add in one more thing. Let's add a drop down, scale it to two, just ease of view. Again, quick buttons, click here, there, turn on movement. I just go test it, add the controllers. Before we build, let's check settings really quickly. Uh, I like to have a name here so I don't do the default override. Just anything you want here for a company name. And uh, one last thing here, which you do need to do is change the input handling to the new system. That's going to reload your project. Uh, here it says multipath still, so that tells me that I didn't click the project validation. So let's click that. Sometimes, you're, depending on your system, it takes a little bit longer uh, for it to load and finish all the validation checks. Build it and let's check movement and, and interaction between the buttons and the UI. Everything there, quick as a button. Let's go ahead and create a new scene for our see-through blocks, our mixed reality blocks. Let's call it see-through. And let's go ahead and open up our overlay menu here. Let's first delete everything. Open up the overlay menu and let's find go down until you see see-through. And when you click the see-through button, of course, it's going to create our XR origin. And it's going to cl close the overlay here. It's a little bit clear. So it's going to create our XR origin and also going to add the PXR manager. And it's going to enable the video see-through and add the, the script here that will have our enable script. Have the camera as black, solid color. HDR needs to be off and post-processing needs to be off. So you can turn it off here on the camera. You can also turn it off in the URP. And post processing off right there, HDR off here, and you can turn anti aliasing forward, doesn't matter too much to right there. Okay. And now the first building block, it just camera effects, camera, that's it. And then, of course, to turn off the room, uh, but there's no controller. So if you go into the video see through the, the canvas one or the video effect, it will add the canvas, like in the controller one that has the world space, has the track device. Graphic recaster and all the uh, the new XR origin will have the PXR manager with see through enabled, but also will have the camera already. But since it already has the like, camera and the the controllers already, you need to turn off locomotion. And the PXR that script is now moved to the canvas. Let's go ahead and open this up, and you'll see the code that we're using here, and how we're using the the LUT textures. We're going to be using that to change the effects of what the, the user actually sees with the camera feed. I'm going to open this up. So first you need two uh, lines of code here, the enable see-through and enable see-through effects. And the rest of these, you can look in our documentation to find out more about these different things. But the best way to kind of test and see it out, you know, it took us a few clicks to kind of get here. Let's go and test it and build it out. So here we're doing a test color temperature. You can move it up and down. So imagine if you are in like mixed reality and then you're doing like you know, some kind of full scene changes like heat. Maybe you're almost trying to do a noir film type of feature where everything's black and white. By changing the LUT texture, you can play around with what the user sees. And I think you can do a lot of really cool things with this. And clear all here. So take a look, have fun with this. I think this is actually a really cool effect. On our device, we need to make sure hand track is enabled. Make sure this is on automatic. Let's go ahead and clean this up so we get ready for the next scene. So we remove all this, enable our room again. For hand tracking, let's have our room back. Let's create a brand new scene that's called hand tracking. And as you may know, overlay building blocks and let's choose Pico hand tracking, when you choose Pico hand tracking, it's the same thing. It always looks for the XR origin. If it's not, it's going to instantiate it. If there's an XR origin, it will just drop the Pico hand prefabs there. And since we don't have an XR origin, it will create an XR origin rig for you. And it'll have, and it'll have the Pico hands. The Pico hands are the ones Pico pre, uh, hand prefabs provided by Pico. And the XR hand tracking uh, block will be the hands provided by Unity's XRI. If you click on XR hands, it will give, first it will check if you actually have Unity's hands in there. If not, it will download the hand visualizer and it will download the um, hand and 
Then it will add in a XR origin, and they will use the PXR manager. And the PXR manager, you have to have hand tracking enabled for it to work. Uh, this package is with the regular standard material. That's why the hands are pink. Go ahead and find the material. Just switch it. It doesn't need to be too fancy. We just, as long as it's with universal render pipeline uh, material here, we'll just do lit. Again, doesn't need to be too fancy. That looks good enough. Just wanted to show you guys. And if you click the hand interaction block here, what it'll do is it'll check again if there is a, a hand visualizer uh, package. If there's not, it'll download that. Then it'll find the starter assets and the hand interaction demo from the XRI toolkit and download those samples. And, and you can find those right here in the package manager. So now that we've clicked it, it automatically downloads it for you. Go ahead and open the hand demo. A lot of things are done for you, and Pico's SDK works with the hand demo right out of the box. You don't really need to do much here. And Unity does a, does a really good job of doing the visualizer, the little hand menu there. And here in the near and far interactor, I want to change where the objects uh, attaches to. So it's going to attach to my thumb, so it's a bit lower than the pinch grab. The default is the pinch grab on the left hand, the right hand. I'm going to change the position to the thumb, so it's a little bit different. So in case later on you're making a project, you're making some kind of weird hand, and you can change where it attaches to on the hand. Okay, let's go ahead and build this and test it out. Make sure you have the right scene enabled here. All right, a little bit of hand menu, click, opens, great. And you grab and see how the thumb changes, it's a little bit offset, and the left hand is right in between the fingers, it's a little more natural there. So play around with it, these attached transforms will help you with your project and knowing exactly what the script does here. These rotate. And great. So nice, quick, easy, only a few steps. And yeah, we're just trying to make your life easier. All right, let's move on to the next. So let's go back into our room for the hand tracking. And so not everybody's going to be in that space. There's a lot going on in the hand demo scene, so let's keep it simple. Click on the grab interaction. It's going to put you back in the room, it's going to use Unity's XRI, but also it's going to create a grab interactable. You're going to need any kind of collider object, and you're going to need these two scripts, the general draft transform. And in the hands, you're going to need the near and far interactor to interact with that grab interactor. And you, again, you can change where it grabs onto. Default is pinch grab, but that was all it is, was, you know, two three clicks of a button and we have a scene where you have hand tracking enabled the PXR manager, uh, grab interactor here and it just kind of works. So do you imagine you, you know, you, this could be in space. So whatever you guys think of, I really hope that you guys build something cool. If you like more of this content, please like, follow, subscribe, and let me know what you guys want to see next.